proud sponsors of the Performers Pod, Vendettaverse.com. Join award-winning porn star Bella Vendetta's new website, Vendettaverse.com, featuring writing, interviews, guest models, live shows, and weekly photo sets and videos. This is the only place Bella uploads her 20 years of vintage Vendetta content from the vault. Membership options include monthly, yearly, and print of the month club. Join today for less than the price of a lap dance, Vendettaverse.com. Performers Pod. Today I'm with Expos Award winning director and performer Mona Wales. Welcome to the podcast. Thanks. I'm so happy to see you and be here. Yeah, I'm so excited to see you. It's been a while. I think last time I saw you was either at Expos or AVN or something in the before times. Yes, maybe it had to be something like that, but those are always a blur. Uh, it, you know, it feels like just yesterday you were in my apartment and we were making stuff with Ray. Yeah, that but was so much fun. Yeah. That was like seven more. years ago. Yeah, you had um, <laughs> the lesbian POV idea, which was so cool. I'm just like, oh my God, this is so awesome. Yeah. I forgot that I did that and then like checked that website during the pandemic when I like was like, oh, do it. And I was like, oh, cool. That's so funny. I will take that. Like not a lot, but if you forget about a project for seven years, yeah, you surprise like, yourself. I feel like that's definitely how porn is where you forget about uploading to your clip site and then you're like, oh, I have $200 now. That's great. I didn't right. know that. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like you've been making such consistently great porn. Like, ever since I've kind of known you, you've kind of, like, I feel like, pop in, make a few really good movies, and then you kind of, like, go away for a while, whether it's travel Mm -hmm. or, like, just personal life stuff, and kind of, like, bounce back, which is so impressive because work-life balance is so difficult overall in the porn industry. So I feel like, if anything else, other than all your porn accolades, Having a work-life porn balance, that's a huge accomplishment. Yeah, and they never, that's something we never talk about because we really congratulate each other about the work stuff, Mm -hmm. which is, deserves, you know, recognition, but also, you know, I just woke up from a nap. We should all take naps and take breaks. So because this is an audio medium, you're on a sailboat in Mexico right now, which is definitely a lot cooler than what anyone else has done on this podcast. (laughs) Yeah, I'm sitting in my cockpit um, on a beautiful sunny day with my my dog here. And uh, yeah, it's my little, it's my island. It's my paradise. It's so amazing. Yeah. So yeah. kind of, I feel like ever since I got to the Bay to make porn, you've always kind of been around and you've always been making stuff. So I feel like you're just kind of always existed in my mind in the <laughs> porn industry. So did you are you from the Bay Area originally or did you come here from somewhere else? I am from the Bay Area and but I came back in 2012. Um, I was living on a farm in uh, North Carolina doing oh, wow. like farm like other stuff like farming like I was briefly in like a religious uh, community where I like lived there and like farmed and made coffins and went by another name and then uh, a friend of mine in the Bay Area, unfortunately, um, passed away. So I had to like scrounge up all the money I had and come back for a funeral. And then I was like, okay, I've got like $10. And I was like, let's get on Craigslist because I've always messed with Craigslist. <laughs> um, it used to be and- <laughs> so good back in the day. It used to be so good and so dirty back in the day. It was, you know, that's like what, like, uh, I miss, I miss that form of the internet where it was just message boards so I got on there and I saw an ad that was like hiring dominatrix will train and I worked at there which was the gates for um, six months and then I had a great time and then I was like no like uh I should sign up for kink there's like a you know somebody was like there's a bdsm porn castle and I was like yeah (laughs) So I did that and thinking it would just be like a fun 
but like thing and then you know a decade later (laughs) it seems like I've always been here it's so weird still being in SF with that with the armory being abandoned because you're just like whoa there really used to be a porn castle here there really used to be like it's so weird to to think about that stuff like now just because it feels like such a whole different city now no, I was there last weekend and it was like the Knob Hill Theater was closed and like every little gritty little thing that is different and changed and the vibe has shifted and Yeah, the mission's unrecognizable. Yeah. Like you go down Valencia um, Street. That's so I took a walk down there and I was like, this is like Soho. This is like the Los Angeles Arts District. This isn't the mission. Like weird. It really is. It was just, I feel like so different even in like 2013 there. Like mm-hmm. it felt oh, just so alive and it felt like such a neighborhood that wasn't, it just wasn't gingified yet. It just was so different. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and I mean, and a sign of that is like kink itself became a real estate (laughs) like (laughs) that was its final like the armory itself like and cybernet was like a real estate company at the end of the day like we didn't know it at the time but (laughs) it's yeah um, that's so also I don't feel like most people realize you we got all like the same perks as um like Silicon Valley workers did where it was like, oh yeah, there's the free coffee. There's there's the personal chef in the building. There's just all that stuff that I got didn't some realize of those was perks. so silicon. Yeah, we got some of the perks. We didn't get the four hundred one k. Nope. <laughs> we, we just got like the fun perks. That are, like, you, should, you should stay at work forever. We got so many nature's green granola bars that I can't look at them anymore without tasting like cleaning wipes in my (laughs) mouth like a bunch of sense memories got all um crossed together but yeah 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 Yeah, Yeah, like the room where they clean the toys and like the kink live thing Mm -hmm. like that room always I have that smell of like of like the silicone toys with the cleaner on it it's always there (laughs) <laughs> never and it will never not be there um but yeah. yeah we did yeah so what kind of after you started doing stuff at kink and doing more bdsm stuff as you were already doing what kind of made mm-hmm. you decide to do other kinds of porn because you definitely branched out from just I feel like there was a lot of people who mm-hmm. were just like okay I'm a local bay area dom or sub and I just shoot at the armory and I feel like that was definitely a thing that did exist at the time yeah, so, and I feel like I was of that, um, that ilk, like, definitely, mm-hmm. like, I didn't have um, a desire, like, I was married at the time, like, I was the San Francisco person, like, I didn't have a desire to go down to LA, I and, and it was made very clear to me early on that my decisions, particularly to shoot certain kinds of contents at the, at the in the industry at that time mm-hmm. precluded my participation in other kinds and so I was like well you know fuck them <laughs> like yeah uh, you know <laughs> like I I like it here and then but then I did but you know then I started shooting like a little bit but I'd only do like one or two like a little bit for evil angel mm-hmm. or groovy or something like that and then it wasn't until the armory closed down really yeah so that it was, was like, like 2015 2014 right yeah like 20 maybe later like 2018 like oh I yeah think, that's true like yeah I had to I had like an Amazon package there I had to pick up mm-hmm. like the day before it closed <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they were like you have Amazon wish list stuff and you need to get it today <laughs> So yeah, it wasn't until production left the building that I was, um, that it became clear that if I wanted to keep doing this for a living and also other things changed in my personal life. So I moved to LA and I started shooting for other companies and shooting all the time. And um, yeah, 
and that and that only lasted a little that only lasted like a year before I was like that's that's a, too much of a totalizing career friend group no balance yeah. working all the time um drain and it was nice to do for that time as like a transition but I like it immediately went back to the bay and then started just you know once or twice a month going to LA making it does a feel movie. very I just assume it's very overwhelming to be in LA or Vegas for porn because like it everything's there and everyone's always working you're always working you're always working and your body doesn't have a chance to do it and like and the more things that the more porn that you're doing or because it's a 12 hour day every day mm-hmm. like yeah, for the sure. other, you're taking care of like your other stuff and you have to start like getting an assistant to like pick up your dry cleaning and it's like that's not my <laughs> that's not so I, so you can sit on set when me. they set up lights literally yeah yeah <laughs> like that's not for me. it's just it was too much of a life and like I just like to um not work for 12 yeah. hours a day every that's day that's also <laughs> definitely not the bay area vibe yeah like, there's no job that's like yeah we work 12 hours a day where you're at work for 12 hours that's just not how it works here yeah yeah so so that's what that's what happened and then I decided to go back to school so I don't know did that and then I then the pandemic happened and then I moved on to a boat (laughs) and that's kind of the last decade of my life in an espresso shot version that's I mean that's a very good explanation I don't think I've had mm-hmm. anyone succinctly describe their career like that. So I think that's really great. Oh, your dog's so no. cute. Oh, thanks. This is Kanji. <laughs> she's a little sick because I went to um, the United States for a week and she stopped eating food in protest. Oh, no. Yeah. She went on a little hunger strike. <laughs> but yes, this is my adorable Sure. Yeah, I think that's a thing. Um, just a work life balance is a thing that I feel like pandemic focus made so many people in the industry really have because you can't just continuously shoot. I mean, I guess some people did during the pandemic, but I just feel like for so many people, you had to kind of figure out why you're doing this, what your mm-hmm. intentions are in the industry, and just really mm-hmm. trying to figure that out. I know for me, for I had sure. to because yeah. I was just working because I'm like, oh, that will be the solution to everything. <laughs> Well, it's a refuge, you know, and I think for me, porn, pornography and sex work has been the thing that I can always rely on when like, yeah. if I'm in a shit situation and need to get out of it, I know how to sell a little ass, make some <laughs> money and like get out of it. And unfortunately, like, and that's just been the most consistently reliable thing in my life. Yeah. That and pants with the dog. Um, <laughs> I, you know, like I... I, you know, I wish that we, that many people in our community had a bigger support net, but that's for often just people that have to take care of ourselves. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. for a lot of people, it's a way out of a bad situation. Yeah. Like, I think that's the thing I really noticed doing this podcast because there's so mm-hmm. many reasons why people are important, whether it's art reasons or, mm-hmm. you know, wanting to move to a big city. I just feel like it's so many that's just like the meaningful thing I feel like people don't see about porn and it can still be sexy and hot and all that but yeah. I think it could be both you know yeah yeah so when you yeah. first started doing porn were you feel like, were you like particularly inspired by anyone who was making porn at the time to do it or were I, you totally oh, out of the world I hadn't watched porn when I started doing it. I've never seen it oh wow like me yeah like <laughs> I like had like some recollection of like a partner watching it and I was like and the only thing I thought it was like an extreme close up of, and I was like, that just looks like a dog's mouth, like with the ass cheeks and, and the dick. And I was like, that's why people would watch that. Like, all right. And then, yeah. And, uh, and like when I told like some of my family members that I was doing it, they were like, have you ever seen that? And I was like, no. <laughs> a minute. <laughs> and I think that that's like, um, I think that that was an advantage in a lot of ways because I just wasn't doing of somebody else's version of the thing or what I thought people wanted. Yeah, that's you really know? cool. So you're just coming at it fresh with your own take as opposed to fresh or completely ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> 
Did you tell your family before you started doing it or? I told some of my family before some of my family. And that's kind of where it, st- it stays. Like everyone's figured out, but I only talk to some of my family about it. Like Celeste. Yeah. Yeah, that can be such yeah. a hard thing. Yeah, my I got yeah. outed like two years ago to the rest of my family that I'm like, okay, I guess I need to make the announcement now. I'm like, if you don't know. Yeah, somebody did it for me and <laughs> or added me. Yeah. Whichever, you know, performed that emotional yeah. labor for me. So I was like, yeah, that. <laughs> and I was like, thank you. Gosh. <laughs> yeah I feel like it's always like the first few months after people find out they're like oh you're still living a normal life your life is boring and it's like yeah that's actually kind of how it is like I yeah. feel like there's so many misconceptions that's always every weekend mm-hmm. Xavier and every weekend everyone's partying and yeah nah. all of that and it's like no it's mostly just like procrastinating at editing and just being like oh I have to promote this I have to get this email <laughs> back from somebody <laughs> yeah yeah um was there like a particular first scene that you did that really made you realize that you wanted to do this for more than just a thing on the side yeah I d- you know I did so it was my it was my first porn scene and it was um for King uh with this woman Francesca and the whole day I you know like in my dating in my personal life sex and dating I didn't have a ton of experience Mm -hmm. uh with either of those things and it always felt so heavy like fucking somebody in my experience meant like this person wanted more from you wanted a bunch of them like needed you to be their girlfriend needed you to be like to drop your life needed x y and z and like I never and I was you know it was and like, I gotta tell the kids out there, like, there wasn't always Tinder and all of these things. Like, mm-hmm. you couldn't, like, it wasn't really part of my world, um, at least. And so, yeah, if that felt really liberating and like I could just have sex for my own enjoyment without assigning my life up or like giving people more than just that. And yeah, and it was really fun. I feel Um, like it's such a nice feeling when you have the first time where you can like shake hands with someone and be like, it was so great working with you. And then that's it. You had a fun scene. And (laughs) you don't need to talk to them again. It's fine. Amazing. Amazing. (laughs) So yeah, so is that. That's so cool. So you immediately basically knew you're like, okay, I want to really pursue this. Well, I just didn't think that they'd like I just didn't think that anyone would want to see that like I was also coming f- to it at a, from a place of inexperience and like part of me wanted to do porn just to make sure I was having sex correctly and I was like they'll tell me if I'm like doing it wrong like the director will like <laughs> somebody <laughs> I just wanted to like check in make sure I wasn't oh doing God. the wrong thing this whole time oh my um, God. So it turns out that's pretty much the general principle. That was- that's so funny. I just wanted to make sure I was doing it the right way. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone is just, yeah. Or they're still just too fancy. I know there's a B on me. One second. Thank oh, you. I was but wondering don't- what that was. I saw it fly across the screen at first. I was like, do you honestly Pansy. have a hummingbird flying oh. across your screen right now? Well, you know, hummingbirds are like my, my like symbol. Like, uh, that's my uh that's my like nick people call me the hummingbird and i have lots of them all with hummingbirds on it no but it's almost it's- hummingbird season again so we'll be seeing them yeah there's so many in california i'm originally from michigan so you don't you don't have anything exciting like that we just have like them. regular birds. <laughs> I love them. I love them. San Francisco, like the crows and the hummingbirds. Oh, so yeah. beautiful. It's such a great city to live in. And I think like porn wise, like especially what was happening here, I feel like in like yeah. 2014 to like 2017 with the armory being open with like, there were so many people moving here for queer porn as well. And it just felt like there was such an active scene going on at the time. It's- it was a different, it was a cultural shift. And I was, again, naive or ignorant enough to think that it was always going to be heading in that direction. 
Yeah. And then, I, and then the Trump years hit and everything swung in the other way. And, and the, and I was just like, Oh, hmm. <laughs> didn't see that coming. Yeah. I, I think just locally, I think everything just went up in price so much where like no one mm-hmm. could be like, Oh, I'm going to move to San Francisco to do porn. Right. Right. It's just so drastically different. I feel like yeah. just like the yeah. whole energy of the city. Because even nice. after the armory closed, I feel like most of the companies that were here, like Trouble Films was barely shooting in the Bay anymore. We were shooting mostly in Europe on trips. I think Tro- um, Crash Pad was shooting a little bit in mm-hmm. SF, but was still shooting at other places. It's just really yeah. wild to see how much that scene went from being such a big thing to just kind of dissipating. Like, well, how is it there? It's like, is there a new OnlyFans community of co-creators? Not really. People? There's no, like a yeah. few people who are left here, but they're mostly locals who are like, oh, I have a day job and I do porn on the side is like my yeah. other thing. Yeah, yeah. So there's yeah. like a few, there's a few people like that, but I don't remember the last person who moved to the Bay to do porn. Like, it's just not a thing anymore. Would not recommend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Neither. if you're moving to any city, Probably not that. I feel like the energy yeah. really transferred a lot to um, Berlin. I feel like mm-hmm. Berlin now has that like cool art porn scene where people are nice. moving nice. there and you can get a bedroom for $300 and, you know. Love that. Love that. Love that. Yeah. Good. So you've obviously traveled a lot. Do you have a favorite city that you've liked to shoot in so mm-hmm. far? <sighs> favorite city to shoot would probably be like um would be like sieges uh which is south of barcelona like the i did a handful of productions there and that community which is like i didn't know this like historically queer dating back to the 1700s yeah. it was like the place where the first gay marriage between like sailoring people happened was there oh, in wow. sieges so yeah, it's like a, it's been, and then became like a, like a hotbed for like anti-war queers to hang out through all of that. And I, I don't know. Anyway, Sieges is the best. There's lots of like, for the content that I was making, there was like lots of public spaces with that were, you were okay to have sex and be naked. And um, well, and what kind of content stuff. were you shooting, Mona? <laughs> I was I was shooting for King's Public Disgrace, which is like a wholly, wholly complicated uh, situation. Um, <laughs> and but the, that doesn't mean that the city is not the best to produce in. Yeah, I, I I've heard conflicted things about that side. Oh, I, but also, no. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but There's also. No- there's no thing in my career that like is more conflicted I think for me yeah and I still don't have a a clear a clear vision on it I feel like we all have a lot of that in our careers where there are definitely conflicting things where it's like oh during the time maybe that was a great thing maybe now I don't feel so great about it I definitely have that with some yeah. early transport I shot which at the time was still using very wild out there names <laughs> I'm just mm-hmm. like how did I do that you know yeah yeah but I think that's almost like part of being in this industry that you're gonna have some of those experiences and having scenes with exes out and all sorts of things <laughs> like that yeah. which it's like oh like yeah. that site yeah. is still yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah where like it sells and then you get the notification it's a photo of you and your ex and you're just like yeah. no <laughs> yeah but but I do actually like the 1769 <laughs> direct deposit so okay that is true <laughs> I'll let it live our love goes on and on um, uh yeah so I think that, like, I do love Spain. Um, uh, I do. Yeah, I've actually, yeah, someone else actually brought up the Barcelona area, and it's just, it's just so cool that porn is being made in, like, such amazing locations that you never think about. I feel like the general public is like, oh, if it's porn, it's in LA or it's in Vegas, basically. Yeah, it's so different. Like, we got some, I think it was Madrid one day, um, 
like a, a nun watched our production grabbed a police officer and like was trying to get us to, to get the police officer stopped and he like talked to the nun and like calmed her down and then came over and was like you know do you guys want to shoot this at like my house like I was <laughs> oh my god I was like <laughs> <laughs> I was like gosh this would never happen in the United States uh, yeah I just feel like yeah. shooting in Europe is such a just such a different experience. I love shooting in Amsterdam just because everyone's doing sex work there and the hotels yeah. know what you're doing and they're just like, oh yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It's just like, oh yeah. yeah, you see sex workers walk through the hall and they're just like, oh yeah, it's just Amsterdam. It's just how it is. Dream. You moved yeah. there for a little bit, didn't you or no? Um, I was going to. So I shot two films there right before the pandemic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm originally from this town in Michigan named Holland. That's like a mini Netherlands. So nice. I'm Dutch, and but it's super conservative. It's um, do you know Betsy DeVos? Yeah, she's the from Secretary my hometown. Of education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Terrible person. So wow. that was kind of all the right wing people I grew up around. And then I went to the Netherlands for the first time. It's all sex work, all radical politics, and like everyone's smoking weed and there's mushrooms everywhere. And I'm just like, wow. So this is they all really... the culture I grew up with, but with all the cool things of my adulthood that sequel really was a letdown <laughs> <laughs> right yeah, yeah so um my partner and I were gonna move there I think it was we were thinking about in like April of 2020 but then obviously <laughs> the pandemic happened because <laughs> my partner's working for a company um based in the Netherlands at the time so I'm like oh this is perfect I'm shooting a bunch there but yeah, that kind of happened, but mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. I just think Europe's view on sex is so different, and there's so many festivals there now that are doing porn, and yeah, I think it's awesome. really a shame we don't have the same thing here. I think there are some really special things about the U.S. porn industry, but yeah, but you, you know, I feel like I'll we never see I'll each take... other's work. <laughs> no, no, we absolutely don't. I absolutely don't, and I don't even... Like, I don't even see my own work, really. Yeah, <laughs> Just the stuff I, that I edit myself. That's the only And then content you of edit it so I much, watch. you never want to see it again. No. <laughs> no. 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 Um, yeah, even, you know, like, I'll still occasionally direct for Kink, like, the summer did a handful of things. And they were like, they were like, watch the edits and let us know what you think. And I was like... I'm not gonna do that, but it's, it's fine. Let it out. It's You're cool. Like, I, I, I was there. I, I saw it. It's cool. It's cool. Just you know, you take every cool. Looks good enough. You know, it's cool. I feel like the editing. Sure, the of editor porn, did a fine job. I feel like the editing of porn is the hardest part that no one ever thinks about. Like it's so uncomfortable to for me to hear myself have sex or to hear myself yeah. talk. Mm -hmm for a whole well, scene it's you know it is and I, we especially in the age of only fans i don't know if you feel this i'm just sick of looking at my face oh my gosh like yeah. especially the high point of the pandemic when i was just in my room just constantly working and then on zoom for school where you were just like looking at yourself const i, I was oh, gross gross did not did not like that but it, when I shoot my own stuff like now like 99.9% of my content it's just solo so I just shoot for the edit and yeah. I've gotten so good at it that I I don't have to I like will clap them, but <laughs> I just <laughs> cut the claps together and we're done you know that's it I feel you're definitely important if you know the clap system if you can just be like then you clap it's like yeah <laughs> and the end you're you're done yeah so yeah I feel like it's so hard to always be looking at yourself on whether it's camming whether it's mm -hmm. editing your own content I feel like it's such a hard thing and you don't see your actual self in it no and everyone got a little taste of that with their Zoom overload, but 
now hopefully they can empathize with cam performers more i've always heard i don't know if this is true but if you look at yeah. photos or video of yourself six months before you actually see yourself as yourself because you're not tied up in your own anxieties about yourself huh. which kind look of makes sense huh. because Take i feel it. like usually when i look at photos of myself from six months ago i'm like oh that's great but at the time i'm like i hate this photo so much <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's interesting. We'll have to. I'll have to look at it. But that's the other benefit to shooting locations and traveling to shooting and all of that is that I, and really do enjoy like some of the technical aspects of like shooting beautiful light and like nice locations. Mm -hmm. And so I get to like not focus on the like the subject the commercial subject of the image and and it's nice you know. I feel like that's always kind of been an element of your porn even when you're doing BDSM I feel like you do have like an element of artistic and almost like softness and light to it where it's not just like black dungeon that's it you know I do like light I do and I understand that my camera likes light like so <laughs> I, I like to keep it well I like low lit stuff that is true and that's so cool and I like yeah. natural light I don't I don't really care for too much studio light and I feel for, like it's such like a different thing in BDS in the BDSM context too kink has a look that they have done because they were in the armory and they have these certain kinds of lights and these certain kinds of rigs and the kino flow and the bottom of this and then that and I think that's all well and good However, I think that it is that that particular aesthetic is dating. So if you yeah. look at the content now, I think it doesn't look that's still being made in that way. It doesn't look good to our eyes because we've seen too much of it. It was too much of that 2015 era. I mean, I the, also feel like that has to do with the amount that kink was shooting at the time like um, they yeah. were shooting every single day at the armory like multiple shoots a day yeah with no natural light and so <laughs> <laughs> because natural light is like a it's a tricky she's a tricky bitch she's gonna change mm -hmm. um so but yeah well, yeah I think that's so yeah. cool that you have your own particular aesthetic that you know you're really doing that goes beach with dom. all of this beach dom beach, beach dom, dom. <laughs> beach dom <laughs> so look someday it will evolve into like yacht dom well yeah you know what's really interesting is i've never shot i like don't work on my boat because it's my boat i'll shoot on other people's boats but like my boat is uh, a non it's just not for that it's I just wouldn't not do for that, that either. I can understand that. It's my home. Definitely. It's like I sucked 10 million jillion dicks for this. And <laughs> I don't like, and I will whore myself out again and again, but I do not whore my boat out. <laughs> it is weird when you do think about your sex work career in that context. You're like, wow, I fucked like 500 people to get to this point in my life. <laughs> <laughs> or this trophy is representative of like 300 digs I know it is crazy right or just like the liquid amount of cum like that's the stuff that <laughs> like that's a small c probably it's incalculable like to calculate the <laughs> like I would love for somebody to calculate like the Pornhub zooms the average like like or like Pornhub views and how much cum has been spilt on our behalfs. I want that so Because that would be like a better ranking system. <laughs> it's like gallons. How to are you use feeling, gallons. How are you feeling about Pornhub? Oh, I don't have. I like never really, I never really messed with them too hard. And um, if it's not one, the, the thing that, so I've been in this industry long enough to know that I like don't actually know how how the upper levels I've never been able to penetrate the upper levels and the systems and who owns what because they're all owned by the same 
people yeah. but are they really and they're actually in this country and they're actually this person and there's it's like this huge shell game thing and yeah with, like, i don't fake identities un- and stuff i do not understand especially those porn hubs like the hub sites are owned by like various different like it is so confusing and it's designed that way and it's best to not ask too many questions i feel so um <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> and it's like because you'll never know they'll never know yeah you know because they're they're these conglomerates that are based in other parts of the world that pull levers that you'll never see and um yeah and do i think that they are not focused on the safety of the people that perform in them yeah i do think yeah that, that is yeah, not I what think. they are concerned about yeah, I think like the power that these companies sometimes have, whether it's um, Avian Stars or Pornhub, where like performers have their entire income on it, and then there can just be a policy change. And they're like, okay, we're gonna eliminate monetiz- monetization, or we're gonna change this, or like, yeah. I don't know if you heard, um, in they banned Russia from Pornhub, but they yeah. also banned yeah. all the models. So I was wondering like, if they were going to do that. Yeah. And yeah. Like, um, mm-hmm. Yeah. I understand but again, why, but also you're doing that to sex workers right now. I don't yeah. know. It's just so hard to me to feel like any of these companies really. They don't. They, they don't. And, and, you know, and they could have made it and it's just like the other tech companies it's like they could have built age verification software and from mm-hmm. the beginning but that would if they would have done that then they would have been responsible and they chose you know to not and so they their platform got demonetized yeah i mean just how long Pornhub was just letting anyone upload any footage they wanted yeah yeah just it's truly crazy. ridiculous it's been i yeah. think it was like a decade nearly and it was just continuously doing that not paying performers yeah it just seemed, seemed like such a scam for so long i'm glad they're trying to do better things now but i it just scares me when one company controls so many performers careers and especially now since the pandemic there's so many girls who only know this industry since the pandemic yeah, they only yeah. know making their living off OnlyFans or Avian Stars. That was that was the big thing. Like when it looked like OnlyFans was about to go down, I was like, oh, "Okay, it's time." That would cause a severe shift in my the way that I live my life. Yeah, and uh, and I'm sure, I'm, and I know that's I'm not alone. And so, yeah, it's really that's the one to watch. I think that's the one that I'm more concerned about. I feel like Pornhub lost a lot of their their power in the last year and it's been absorbed by another one and that's why we always have multiple platforms but you know yeah we could be like more that. responsible to the people to the people that are featured on their websites but that's a problem big and small whoever you're working with I've yeah. never found I've never found a company that prior that's really number one priority was the welfare of their models yeah I think there's sites that are trying now and I think it's getting better like I think what Minivids is doing now was like unrecognizable yeah. five years ago where they're yeah. like yeah if you want to tell your clients on there what your Venmo is or PayPal or whatever they're like go for it you're it's about you making money like I really yeah like I feel like that's so radical in this industry because I feel like every single cam site, anything you're going through, they're trying to get every single penny from you. Yeah, that's wild. I didn't even know about that. Mm-hmm. Thanks for thanks for telling me. Yeah, that's the one thing that's really impressed me about many. But oh, I'm not trying to plug them by wearing this shirt either. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do have what, some issues with the them as well. I know. Commercial break. Like they should this. definitely pay me Thank money for this. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I just feel like when you and I both got into this industry with so much based on studios, and I feel like now it's really, if you want to be a porn performer, you can mm-hmm. kind of make it happen on your own and it's kind of up to your Absolutely. own. Absolutely. And you make better stuff and you're, you'll represent yourself better and you'll be happier with the work over time. Like if I... If I got in now, I would have, I would never, I would never. 
work yeah. for a major studio or I'd let them beg for it. I'd get big enough on one of these platforms to make the studios beg you for it and you charge a huge amount and just do the one and get their traffic, you know? Yeah, it's wild the amount that we were getting paid for our first scenes and to think about that now and be like, that's worth a lot more than we were ever given. That's true, but that, like, I don't mean to, like, the main company that I shot for my whole career never gave me a raise. Wow. No, my performer rate has been the same since day one for them. That's messed I'm so sorry. That yeah, makes me upset like, at them. I mean, I could have asked for more, I guess, but it's just like, they always will see me as the local girl that, like, <laughs> they just call Yeah. Me. Like, you know, they're <laughs> never not going to see me as Mona from the block. Like, so that's <laughs> fun. Like, it's endearing in their own way, but it's like, huh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, I feel like we just aren't given the um, necessary space to bring these things up. I feel like yeah, like yeah. porn performers are very disincentivized to be like, oh, can I get over my usual rate? Like, I feel no. like if you ask that, the way it's viewed in the industry is like, oh, they cause problems. They're money hungry. Yeah, like all those yeah. things. And it's like, but now you don't even, I don't even make money on, on the performance tour studios. That's like, just it's only advertisement yeah for my own content yeah. or and so that's why i only shoot for a handful of folks you know if yeah. if and when but i'm like not feeling it at the moment i'm like it's been like a year or since no it's been since the summer and i'll probably go back and do some videos this summer but that's that's about right for me yeah, it's like one month like- each year the it's risk good. right now is just not worth it. If you're getting paid a grand or like 1200 for a scene and you could possibly catch COVID, even if everyone's negative, it just doesn't feel like it's... Yeah. I caught it twice. <laughs> I think I got it two weeks ago after a shoot. And yeah, yeah. Very upset. It's not even just being like, oh, wow, I felt sick for a week. It's just like over a shoot that was a basic shoot. I'm just like, why? Yeah. It's like, yeah. I know. I wish, I wish, I wish we could catch it in more fun ways. (laughs) I'm like, out of all the gang bangs I've done, all the intense scenes, I'm like, I just did a simple, like, boy girl scene. And it's like, what? How is that? How I got that? I even take my underwear off in the scene. There you go. Take your underwear off, kids. You won't catch COVID. Yeah, maybe that's the real secret. If you just yeah. skip right to the fisting, no chance. Exactly. <laughs> so um, you obviously, yeah. 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 Sorry. So, oh no, you can continue if you had something to say. I don't. I didn't. Okay. So obviously, you've done a lot in your career over the last decade. Is there anything that you still really want to accomplish that you haven't so far? You know, um, I've been thinking about that. You know, I do, I do really enjoy write the writing part of mm. film production, and I think it would be fun to like win for best screenplay. I think that'd that that's really like cool. some, something that's on my um, on my list. But in terms of like performance, I feel really fortunate that I have gotten to do pretty much everything that I have ever wanted to do in every different configuration. And I've been really lucky to, to really, I think I've like run the gamut and um, I don't ever feel like I'm not going to quit pornography. Like I do want to age mm-hmm. on camera. I do want to, I do feel a sense of place um, in the industry that is nice and uh and I enjoy it but in terms of like the movies that that I want to make like no like no not really oh yeah I want to make a musical that's not true I want to make a musical um like an original singing dancing porno musical do you remember the at Biz the movie you pitched to me yeah you're it's like, that same one Glad- you're Land? like yeah. yeah, you're like, it's a musical and everyone's going to be roller skating. Yeah, I do want to do it. Like my own Xanadu La La Land called like Land about like, 
and like and I see and I feel like the first oh scene is like a direct rip off of La La Land where we're all like sucking dicks in the back seats <laughs> of cars and like we line up all the cars and we dance like over and through them um and yeah yes that's, that's so amazing thanks I do yeah so if ever if I ever feel like coming back I think it would be that and then but um what's cool is like I applied uh recently I find out April 1st so I'm in this like holding pattern I applied to Berkeley's film studies PhD and there's a way in which I can get funding from Berkeley if I get into that program for different projects now do I think that they'd let me make a full hardcore porn with their money probably not I but mean, could I make something cool? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could make something cool. <laughs> I feel like you could almost do it. I feel like I if you frame it. it in the right way, like I always yeah. bring up whenever anyone asks about film stuff about my film, I always bring up early Andy Warhol because there's porn yeah. in it, but people don't yeah. know that. So there's like, oh yeah, like the pictures. And you're mm-hmm. just like, yeah, yeah, sure. Exactly like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or and you it's bring always John Waters, yeah, exactly. And there, there is room, there's room, there's room for it in there. It just has to be like more of a forgiveness than a permission thing, and it has to be framed in a certain way. But, um, but really, you know, what I'm after is my budget to make my singing, dancing, blowjob movie. So <laughs> that's so cool that you still do. You have a script for it. No, 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 no. I, I think I might have started it like years and years ago because this one's been floating around for yeah quite I'm some like you time. told me about this I think it was like right after I met my partner that was the first event they went to so that was at least like five years ago now <laughs> so I'm like you're still you still have that idea at least yeah it's just that's a harder one to pull off but one day one day one day so that's that's it that's what I'd like to do it's so amazing so I have one final question for you first off thanks Mm -hmm. so much for taking the time in like your paradise to talk to me (laughs) it it makes foggy sf look way less fun today it's like the only (laughs) I'm in the one neighborhood that doesn't get fog basically oh yeah yeah and um it was super foggy today so I'm just like okay and then I look at you and you have totally blue skies you have your dog what I thought was a hummingbird flying by like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so amazing. Yeah, it's, I will be going to the beach uh, immediately after this. But thank you for joining me, my paradise. Yes. And you and your partner are welcome to come visit. Oh, whenever. yeah, definitely. Anytime you're in good. SF. But so I have one last question. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is like the only like buzzfeedy clickbait question I have. Okay. Asked. All right. All right. All right. If you could magically change one thing in porn that tomorrow when you wake up is totally different, what would it be? I think the easy thing to fix, like an easy fix for all of our, for our contemporary thing is if we both got paid for uh, studio scenes and got to keep them, Fuck keep yeah. all the rights. It would be so easy. We'd all be lining up to shoot for studios again. It would and be so easy. we would cross promote the thing and our, all of our interests would be aligned. Please, somebody who listens to this, just give us give us the rights to even just sell it on one of our platforms yeah behind a paywall please it's just such bullshit that it's not like that and it's so easy and even if it was a thing where companies were like okay we're gonna have exclusive rights for a year that's when you're gonna get most of your sales and then okay I can have the scene I feel like we all have so many scenes that just kind of don't exist anymore just yeah. because a company shot it five years ago or something and they don't and want to us, promote it anymore but what we know is that our old stuff sells like hotcakes on every on our other yep. platforms so just let us and then we'll do such a better job you won't be all mad about oh you know like i just feel like some producers are so upset about how we're able to do it to, for ourselves and don't want to work for what they're offering and it's like we'd work for what you're offering if we also got to keep the content I feel like Happily. it would save studios too like I feel it like would. they're suffering so much and let's be honest content trades the future of this industry it's not yeah. going to become a thing where these studios are going to become oh this studio controls everyone's career now 
They just yeah. terminate if you're a star. It's just not yeah. that way anymore. No, no. So I think that that's my answer. That's a really good answer. Well, do you have social media? I do. I do have social media. My Twitter is um, Mona Wales XXX, spelled M O N A W A L E S. Because check this out there's this new band or, who pick, stole my name, Mona what the fuck? Wales. And they're like trending on Billboard. And I'm like sitting here, like, please don't let this band break. Please don't let this band break. <laughs> anyway, um, so. Uh, so yeah, Mona Wales. And then my Instagram is Mona X Wales. Can I promote the other things on this? Or oh, is it... yeah, go for oh, yeah. it. Um, and then my OnlyFans is um, at Mona Wales XXX. Awesome. That's it. Yeah, thank you, thank Chelsea, you. for having thank me. Good to so see much. you again. Bye, everyone. Thank you.